Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. We've got a great guest tonight. But before we get started, let me tell you about one of our sponsors, ReadyWise. As a busy mom, I know the importance of being prepared. Let's face it, life can be unpredictable. Whether it's sudden storms, power outages, or other unpredictable events in life, being prepared with ReadyWise emergency food gives you peace of mind knowing you'll have delicious, nutritious meals on hand. They're also great on camping trips and hiking adventures. ReadyWise has a huge selection of freeze-dried meals from breakfast to pasta dishes. You can rest assured your food will be good to eat when you need it with their 25-year shelf life. ReadyWise is an American company providing high-quality, delicious food packed at their state-of-the-art plant right here in the USA. That means you're supporting American jobs when you choose ReadyWise. Always be prepared. Visit ReadyWise.com and use promo code TRUMP20 at checkout for 20% off any regular priced items. That's ReadyWise.com, promo code T-R-U-M-P-20. Tonight, we are excited to welcome back one of our favorite guests, Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna. Anna, welcome back to the show. Thank you for joining us. Um, You've been busy. There's been a lot going on. I want to talk to you in a few minutes about becoming a mom and being a congresswoman and a mom at the same time. You got a lot of things going. But I have to start by asking you about something that the Biden-Harris campaign, or it says Biden-Harris HQ, uh, just recently put out on Twitter, really attacking you and Donald Trump simultaneously. So here's what they say for people who haven't seen it. It says left GOP rep Luna claiming, quote, Trump has never said anything xenophobic or racist about immigrants. Right. Trump literally this morning saying immigrants are poisoning America. I'm going to play everybody the sound of what my father-in-law said. Ready? All right. So, um, Congresswoman, give us just your immediate thoughts on that, on the way that uh, the Biden-Harris campaign is digging in here on trying to claim something that is obviously false about Donald Trump and really about you in general, too. Uh, What did you think of that? I mean, so I clicked on the audio recording and it just it never fails to amuse me that they'll try to clip things and not even provide context and just hope people do their own research. So I immediately responded. I said, you know, roll the full clip and see what he's actually saying. And so I listened to it and he's talking about illegal immigration, which is for the Biden Harris administration, a big problem. You're seeing a massive surge in Hispanic Hispanic Americans, which Laura is the largest voting minority in the country of Mexican descent voting for President Trump because of his stance on illegal immigration. And so what I also pointed out to and responded to the Biden Harris headquarters is look, you know, you guys intentionally left off the fact that you not only insulted the entire world by declaring Easter trans awareness or whatever debacle they decided to come up with. But the fact is, is that they intentionally left it off their Spanish speaking White House page because they did oh. not want that to really disseminate to the masses. And so, I mean, in my opinion, this could not have been a, a worse thing for them to even respond on. But I'm hoping that Twitter will kind of do its thing and that people will actually post the full clips because a majority of Americans agree with that statement. Of course they do this, but this is what these people do. They cannot Congresswoman uh, operate in any sort of fact or basis in reality, because if they did, they would have to admit that they are utterly destroying our country. Let's just look at that clip in and of itself. When Donald Trump says that illegal immigration is poisoning our country, you could also take that quite literally. And that is the truth. Fentanyl is the number one killer of the youth in this country right now. And it is thanks to the open border policies of Joe Biden and his borders are Kamala Harris that we have such an influx of fentanyl coming into America. Obviously, it is hugely problematic just to have a wide open southern border. These people don't seem to care about it either. They're banking on all of these people who they are illegally allowing in our country to initially break our laws and then come on in and live off the taxpayer dime here in America. Either they're banking on uh, these people, Congresswoman, uh, being future voters of theirs, 
or they're they're considering possibly the U.S. Census, counting these people as citizens of states where we know congressional members have been lost, like states like California and New York, because people are fleeing these areas. Why on earth do you think they are willing to destroy America by allowing an open border policy. What do you think the play is here for Biden Harris administration? It's um it's very multifaceted and you actually bring up a lot of points that Democrats have actually been caught on record in conversation talking about, hey, we're losing voters to some of these red states. We need these people basically so that they can get voters in the upcoming election cycles. I think it largely does have to do with census, but also too, I mean, just from the internal workings of Washington, you know, I find it very interesting that you actually have footage of Debbie Washerman Schultz, who's a Democrat representative here in Florida, and Jerry Nadler, who's a Democrat representative in New York that is basically saying in so many words, if we don't have them, who's going to pick the crops in the field, which is not only like grossly scary wow. people, but when you actually look at what's happening with really the the trans the way that the administration and really Democrats from their national messaging have pivoted really previous to 2016, as you can actually find footage of President Clinton and President Obama talking about border security. And then all of a sudden in 2016, you see this switch in the national messaging from all Democrats on immigration. And so what happened was is when you look at the population trend line of Hispanic Americans becoming the largest voting minority in the country, specifically those of Mexican descent, what you see is starting in 2016, it starts to outpace really black Americans. And unfortunately, the Democrat Party has always used identity politics as a way to gain control with the voting, the voting masses. And so what they did is they stopped caring really about black communities, which is no surprise because a majority of what they have been doing has been hurting black communities. And we know that President Trump during his term in office did a ton, especially for historical black colleges. But then also too, what you'll see is they started to pander to this open border message. And you really saw that fail and especially a lot of these border towns in the Rio Grande Valley area. And then, of course, now we're seeing that, you know, after Joe Biden basically was playing Despacito by Justin Bieber, oh. saw his wife call it breakfast tacos, that they're doing really, really bad with the voting, the Hispanic voting demographic. So it's multifaceted. But again, if you want to see actual racism, if you want to see someone being treated and basically looking like imported help, look no further than the Democrat Party and some of the awful things that Joe Biden has said about black Americans that his campaign fails to tell the American people about because they're protecting him. Yeah, it is. It's so true. And what's funny is the example that I, I initially asked you about where they they misconstrued a sentence. They took things out of context. This is the only way they can actually try to fight, right? Because they don't have a coherent message. They don't have a vision for America that anyone wants to buy. They don't have a candidate for whom anyone wants to vote. So they are left doing the thing that they've been trying to do and they have sadly in some ways been successful with doing to Donald Trump from the beginning. I think back, and my favorite example of this Congresswoman is the very fine people hoax, I call it. Because this is when we're talking about Charlottesville, Virginia, when Donald Trump was president and, and this horrific situation took place in Charlottesville, he came out and he made a statement about it. And what he said, and I will say it verbatim, and anyone who doesn't know or doesn't believe me, you can go look this up. They didn't play the full clip, but what he said is there are very fine people on both sides. And what he meant by that is there are people who really wanted to keep the statues up, who believed in the history and in not tearing that down. And there were people on the other side who didn't like it, who felt like it was time to move on. Very fine people on both sides. That's where they clipped it. But what he said was, except the neo-Nazis and white supremacists who should be condemned totally. They took that part and they left it out. So you have a vast majority of folks on the left who watch the mainstream media, who only get their information from these sources, who truly believe that Donald Trump in that moment was you know, saying, oh, well, white supremacy and these neo-Nazis were great. That was a great thing. Of course he wasn't. They can't tell the truth, Congresswoman, because if they told the truth, as you just pointed out, it would hurt Joe Biden. It would hurt the Democrat Party. People would actually start looking at things in a very different way. I actually think, though, 
that something really interesting has happened, which is that they've tried all of these the smoke and mirrors stuff with especially Donald Trump. They've gone so far as to try and throw this guy in jail for committing no crimes, and it's starting to backfire on them. What is your vibe out there right now? Because I'm telling you, some of the stuff they've tried to pull, it's been infuriating to to watch happen, especially when you know the truth, like we do in our family, and like you do, uh, you know, working so closely with President Trump. What is your sense out there right now of things? Because I think we are poised for a historic election in a way that these voting blocks that traditionally only vote Democrat are waking up and they're saying, you know what? We can't vote this way anymore because it's not working for us. I actually get chills when you say that because I'm seeing it. I don't just hear the chatter in Washington. Some people might look at this like, oh, of course they're going to say that. You know, they're they're tight with the campaign. But no, here's the facts. If you look at national polling, whether it's in Michigan, Pennsylvania, even places not seen before like New Mexico, um, again, that has a largely Hispanic voting demographic. These are literally President Trump is pulling ahead with demographics that he typically did not receive before. And that's a lot with independent voters as well. And I think really the tipping point was when they booked him and arrested him. And really that mugshot, that's when people were like, this is crazy. One, it scares Americans. They don't want to see that there is a dual justice system. But that in itself, I think, was a tipping point for a lot of Americans in saying this is obvious that it's weaponization. But I also want to bring up another point, you know, this administration and everything that they've done, it's become so egregious and obvious that actually CNN interviewed illegal immigrants and they, when they asked, well, if you could vote for someone, who would you vote for? And they said, Joe Biden's corrupt. Not that we're going to vote, but if we could vote, we would rather vote for Trump. And CNN actually did not know what to do with the reaction. <sighs> because they didn't expect that. And so it aired and they're just like, well, it is what it is. So many people know that the corruption exists. I think that people are tired of it. But also, more importantly, I mean, look what's happening at our southern border. Look what's happening in the Middle East. Look what's happening in Ukraine. And then to see and know that these people are intentionally clipping information. I'll say one more thing before you know we move on to the next question. But it's, it's not by mistake that the left after the 2020 election went and bought up conservative Spanish media stations across the country. And they tried to flag um, conservative Hispanic influencers as pushing disinformation so that these tech companies of which we revealed an oversight were absolutely co- uh, colluding together to suppress information that they could try to control the narrative. And it's simply not working. So I think the grassroots is incredibly important. Don't lose lose faith because we're going to win big. And I, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I. you know what? It's I, I always have been of the opinion that the right thing ultimately happens, that the truth comes out. And I'll tell you what, they've really tried to put this one man, my father-in-law, President Donald Trump, really through hell. They've they've tried to do everything from taking away his businesses to ruining, you know, everything that he's worked his entire life for, to harming his family, to anything they can possibly think of. And I think for those of us in our family, it's we kind of are like, well, you know, we just have to have faith. And we have to have faith that the right thing happens and that there is something bigger than all of us that is at play right now. And I think people feel that with this election. I think people are starting to really understand what is at stake, because I I don't think it's hyperbolic, Congresswoman, to say if Joe Biden and the Democrats are successful and they maintain the White House and we do not win, you know, a majority in the Senate and we don't expand our majority in the House this November, Um, And they're successful with these communist tactics. I don't believe we have the same country left on the other side of it. So I think people are starting to truly get it. And look, you referenced these kind of wars that we have now breaking out across the world, whether it's Russia, Ukraine, whether it's Israel, Hamas. Um, Obviously, none of these things would be happening were it not for bad policy decisions on Joe Biden's part. And you will never get me to think otherwise. I think it started with the number one worst decision he made. It was the first uh, executive order when he became president, shutting down the Keystone XL pipeline. It snowballed into all of this. It has been an utter disaster. But something that I really want to ask you about and something that Donald Trump himself has been very focused on for decades now, China. I, I've constantly talked about China. It's something that I think that we need to start taking seriously. China, no doubt, is trying to usurp the United States as a superpower of the world. They are obviously not taking anything Joe Biden is doing very seriously at all. Do you think Congress is finally taking China seriously? I feel like I've seen some movement in that direction. But I'll tell you what, if we take our eye off of them for one second and we give them any room at all, 
I'm, I'm really terrified about what we could find on the other side. Uh, this is such a, um, this is an onion of an issue. So a couple things. And to answer your question, yes, China is the number one threat. Um, I sit on the House Democracy Partnership. So part of my job in Congress is to basically short foreign relations with foreign governments. And so we recently went on a congressional delegation uh, really to Indonesia and to South Korea, where we met with parliament members, uh, sometimes the president and the prime minister. And honestly, Every single question that I got from their parliament members and then also to an even meeting with the prime minister of one of those countries was, you know, we need President Trump back because we're feeling pressure downward from China being out here, even though we're American allies. Um, the United States having strong leadership is a deterrence for China and what China represents in kind of taking over that territory and region. But also to remember, China's in our own backyards or in South America and everywhere that we're not. They're basically paying off these countries. Not to mention, you want to talk about really what's happening at the southern border. China's shipping fentanyl supply, supplies to some of these cartels, and it comes yeah. right up to our southern border. But even just talking about the influence that China has in our Congress, right? So we know that a majority of the platform of the Republican body has been to fight China, but there are members of the Republican conference that are actually on the pay cut for the Communist Chinese Party and even doing things like trying to infiltrate our pork industry. So there's something called the EATS Act um, that we've been very vocal about. And that's actually headed up by two very well-known Republican members that are basically trying to assist in China infiltrating and taking over our pork industry. And as you wow. know, the it should not be at all legislating on how farmers should conduct themselves at the state level. But these ties to the lobbyists, it goes all the way back to to China. And so we are trying to sift that out. But again, I think that having strong leadership out of the White House empowers leadership in the actual conference to be more aggressive. And if it were up to me, Laura, I mean, you shouldn't be able to buy or sell land near military installations to China. You shouldn't be a member of Congress taking any money tied to China. I mean, if it were up to me, I'd be way more aggressive than we're currently being. Well, I can tell you someone who feels very strongly uh, in the same space as you, and that's Donald J. Trump. He's always called out China. He's always had his eye on them. I mean, if you think back to well before he announced he was running for president, you go back to interviews with him from the early 2000s, and he he was saying, listen, we need to be careful. We need to watch out. You're talking about things that, that most people day to day, we just kind of go about our lives, and we don't really think about it, but you're right. You have, you know, China buying up properties, as you're saying, around these military installations. Heck, they flew a spy balloon all the way across our country. We didn't do anything about it. You have them infiltrating our, our university and educational system in so many places. We have to know about all of this. And they're, they're just, it's like death by a thousand cuts. They're just kind of going in and poking holes in, in stuff. And at some point, you know, it's, it's all going to just come crashing down and we're, it'll be too late at that point. Um, so I love that you are there and I love that you are focused on it. Thank you for doing that. Uh, we need to certainly make sure we get more people on board with this because it it is, I believe they are number one biggest threat right now, as you just said, um, to the United States. All right, nobody move. We have so much more coming up. I want to take a very quick commercial break. All right, I hate to interrupt the show, but let me tell you about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country is facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden. The last thing any of us need is more to worry about. Unfortunately, we now have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our own hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging every one of you tuning into the show right now to get the Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you'll learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. You might have heard Mike Lindell and MyPillow no longer have the support of their box stores or shopping channels the way they used to. They've been part of the cancel culture, so they want to pass the savings directly onto you by having a $25 extravaganza. When Mike started MyPillow, it was just a one product company. And with the help of his dedicated employees, they now have hundreds of products, some you may not even know about. 
To get the word out, I want to invite my listeners to check out their $25 extravaganza. Two-pack multi-use my pillows, just $25. My pillow sandals, $25. Their six-pack towel sets, you guessed it, $25. Their new four-pack dish towels, $25. And for the first time ever, the premium my pillow with all new Giza frat fabric is just $25 and orders over $75 will re- receive free shipping as well. This amazing offer won't last long. Go to mypillow.com and use promo code Trump or call 800 624 3945 today. All right, Congresswoman, last time we had you here, it was about a year ago, it was spring of 2023. So much has happened for you um, since then. How is it being a new mom? How is it being a congresswoman? When you became a mom, tell us all of the things we need to know. Because let me tell you something, becoming a mom is a, a big enough task in and of itself, but you you did this, you know, you're just out there doing it all. I, I love it. How's it going? Well, it, it was definitely interesting. You know, we kind of wanted to keep it a little bit more private and then um, there was a reporter in our lobby that kind of had overheard and credit to the reporter for not breaking the news sooner. But I just didn't want it to be one of those situations because actually when I got elected, I found out right away that I was pregnant. And so we didn't want it to be kind of the focus of my first term in office. And as you know, Laura, we were going through the speaker's fight and there was a lot yeah. that happened just in the first nine months of being in office. But, you know, having the baby is really life changer. Like it fundamentally changes how you view things, especially from a legislative perspective. And the craziest thing to me was the automatic, almost like primal reaction that you have for like really being defensive on children. So I'll I'll, I'll use an example. I was actually talking about family separation at the border. And I, I had this appointee from the Biden administration there. And I was asking him about, and I had just rolled footage of these kids that had been drugged and they were with um, coyotes basically trafficking them. They're, I think, around four and five years old. And this guy starts laughing. I, he's like, you have no proof that those kids are trafficked. And I'm, th- I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm sorry, wait, what? Are you trying to say that that doesn't exist? And so my reaction to him wasn't even necessarily as an elected official or a member of oversight. It was actually as a mom. It's like, how could you sit there and laugh, you know, um, when this is, this is children? But, you know, there was a lot that I didn't know as a first-time member of Congress. And so when I actually had my baby, I had a little bit of a rough recovery. And I actually had asked leadership if I could or like how I could continue voting while I was recovering because I couldn't travel for about a month after I had Henry. And they told me that I couldn't vote. And so for the first time ever in congressional history, I actually proposed vote by proxy for members that give birth in office, which I'm one of 12, which is 0.01% of people that have ever been in Congress for at least a month until you can recover and get back to Washington. And that's something that even if the current speaker doesn't support it, I'm going to introduce it by discharge petition. So that was kind of a first that I actually got a lot of bipartisan support on and didn't really expect outlets like the New York Times to cover. But then also too, then most recently we had the situation come up with IVF and the Alabama ruling. And I know that um, President Trump has been very supportive on IVF being a responsible tool for people that are trying to conceive families. And so we actually introduced uh, bipartisan legislation in an effort to basically say, hey, look, if you're looking for these federal uh, federal funding on certain programs, you have to allow this as the right to try IVF for those that are clinically diagnosed with infertility under doctor supervision. And so we actually kind of modeled that after President Trump's right to try in regards to uh, medical procedures and treatments for people that were terminal. And so that's something that, again, the left media really kind of was perceptive to and has been covering. So I think that it has brought a different perspective. And I didn't expect as a first time member to kind of be leading out these issues, but I am. <laughs> uh, it's so great. By the way, it's so great to see. And and you're right. You look something. It changes when you become a, a mom, when you become a parent. Um, it's hard not to have that perspective in so much. I think about myself, you know, in 2016, I was out all over the country campaigning, obviously the first time my father-in-law ran for president. And at that time I didn't have any kids. And so what I would go out and talk to people about is the man I knew, the things I knew he wanted to do for this country, his vision for the future of America, how he wanted to give the country back to the people and bring back things like manufacturing and a strong military and, and a great economy for people. And then fast forward to 2020 and certainly now, 
I have two children and, and it's, it's the number one thing that I think about, look, as a mom, you know, this, when you're away from your kids, that's all you think about. You think about how soon can you get back to them? But everything that I'm doing out there, whether it's as co-chair of the RNC, all over this country campaigning for my father-in-law and Republicans, you know, this election cycle, and I'm sure the same goes for you uh, being there in Congress, everything that I'm doing, I do because I want a better future for my kids. And, and it's hard not to bring that into this. So I would actually argue that I think it makes you a stronger Congresswoman. And, and I think that the voting by proxy is such a great idea because you're right, gosh, I mean, the guys will never know. I mean, some think they will, like these these men who they're giving like some kind of crazy hormones to who want to breastfeed. The, it's the <laughs> sick stuff. But you'll never know what it's like to give birth to a child and then recover, guys. So, look, I think it probably makes you an even better representative because now you really can represent everybody. So I would say that I think it actually puts you in a much better position. You mentioned those couple of things that, that you're, you've focused on. What else are you, you personally working on in Congress this year? Are there any big things to come that you can tell us about? Yeah, so uh, again, going back to kind of the legislation that we've really been the first to lead the charge on. So uh, there's something called parabens. Parabens are in a ton of, especially women's hygiene products, whether it's makeup, shampoos, soaps, all of that. But it's actually really bad for you. It can be a hormone disruptor. And as you know, right now, Laura, there's a massive increase in infertility in our country. And I think that it is tied to some of these chemicals that are going into our personal products. So we have some legislation that we're hoping to actually ban. And we've actually partnered with a Democrat in the Senate to help co-lead that. Um, the individual that is partnering with us actually helped to uh, ban those microplastic beads that was in a lot of products up until recently. And so we're trying to get that out of our stuff. And then also to... I've on a number of my committees actually interviewed and talked to the FDA. And so there's a lot of stuff, whether it's the artificial food dyes that we're consuming, it's actually in a ton of kids products. And then if you look at comparison yep. on ingredients for ingredients here for food products, whether it's in the United States versus even just the UK, you can see all the stuff that they add because it's frankly, you know, the FDA is for sale. And so I think that the best way that we can help as a country to fight, you know, some of these sicknesses, um, increases in obesity, and really what's making our kids sick is actually to focus on what these corporations are allowed to put into the food product. And so I've been leading the charge on trying to remove our artificial dyes from our food products. So Red 40 is a big one, uh, removing parabens, and then also to just kind of as, as a side project, we're working on the vote by proxy and then the IVF. I think it's amazing. By the way, why do we need those those dyes? Is this just an aesthetic thing that they need to have those in the, the food products? It's just, it's cheaper and it's honestly less expensive if they can use some of the artificial sweeteners and the artificial dyes, but it's mm. terrible. And then the really messed up thing is like, I, I think you know my background, but like I grew up within the welfare system. Um, actually, my dad up until, you know, right before he came to Florida was actually on food stamps, but you're subsidizing and you're really giving the poorest of the poor this product that's actually making them more sick. And then they don't have access to health care, which means that if they do have to go to the hospital for long term exposure to this, those get more expensive. So it's actually right. a really bad thing. And so we're trying to to clean it from the ground up. Well, and I also know that you are a, uh, you're a big animal person like I am. So. I want to say thank you for for anything that that you've done and you will in the future do. Um, you know, it's something so close to my heart. I always feel like you can judge a society by how we treat those most vulnerable. And obviously, we've talked about the kids, but you can also probably put animals in that category. Um, and so, I just want to say thank you on behalf of all the animals out there as well, because I think that you've you are you've been a great ally to the animals as well. And, um, sometimes they get forgotten, not never in my house because I'm a crazy dog lady. So we, we don't let that go, uh, very often. Uh, well, listen, you are, you're a busy woman, you're a busy mom, you're a busy Congresswoman. And we want to say thank you for spending some time with us here at the right view. Keep doing what you're doing. It's really amazing and very inspirational. I think to, to so many of us out there, um, to, to see what you're able to do and just tackling it all with such grace and, um, you know, keep, keep fighting and we'll be here alongside of you every step of the way. So Anna Paulina Luna, thank you so much. Congresswoman from the great state of Florida. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. And I won't back down. I won't back down.
Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.